everybody. Happy Monday. It's another week of exciting, exciting movie and television news. Uh, thank you for, jo uh, for joining me for today's live stream. We have a very Netflix-centric stream today. Uh, I know there's, there were some other stories that broke today that some of you are interested in, and you can certainly ask me about that at the end of the stream. I picked the ones that I thought there was the most to discuss about. Uh, I know some of you are very excited about the Acolyte for Star Wars, but I don't think there's too much to discuss uh, just quite yet uh, that we didn't already know. I guess except for Carrie Ann Moss joining the cast, which is great. I love Carrie Ann Moss. Hey, Raphael. Uh, welcome back. Uh, so, as always, the way live streams work, thank you for everyone who is joining. Even if you're not a member, don't worry about it. Member, non-member, whatever you can do. Hey, welcome back, Jay. Uh, someone very nicely just wrote me they were about to be deployed with the 7th Fleet, which I thought was incredible. And they said that while they couldn't be a member, they did enjoy every all the videos and the live streams, and they would see, see us when they got back. Hey, Giancarlo, welcome. And that was just a really nice message to get. So if you're watching and you're not a member, uh, you can always message me on Twitter and you know just do what you can, um, what you're capable of doing at the moment. But anyway, so, so I just wanted to say that. So the way live streams work, oh, that's right, Stephen, Daphne Keene, who has gotten quite grown up, she's also in the Acolyte as well. Uh, I'm the most excited for the Star of Squid Game, uh, to be honest with you. Well, hello in Argentina there, Giancarlo. So the way um, Elon says, after Jim and just in time. That's right, you just made it. So the way live streams work is to try to keep your comments, uh, you know, in your super chats, please, to the, um, to the subject at hand. Oh, look at Tanya gifting five memberships. Hey, KJ. That's so sweet of you, Tanya. Whenever, you guys are such a generous uh, group. It, it just warms my heart every time. Uh, if you'd like to get a, a gifted membership, I believe you have to turn on uh, that you're willing to accept gifts or something on your YouTube channel or, or click that when it comes up, that notification. You just gotta, um, Matthew says you have to update the YouTube app. So uh, you might wanna Google how to accept uh, membership gifts, but that's just very, very kind of you. Uh, so the way it goes is that please try and keep your comments and your super chats. Hey, uh, hey, Andrew, welcome back to whatever we're discussing. Uh, and then at the end of the stream, as always, for the final 10 minutes, you may ask me anything that you would like. And then I'll do a bunch of shout outs. Hey, Kevin Feige. I don't know Kevin Feige. I'm talking to this Kevin Feige right there who has Thanos' picture. Hilarious. All right. All right, everybody. It's so nice to see you all. I've been working on my Wakanda Forever review. Uh, the the non-spoiler embargo lifts tomorrow at noon. Look at you guys thanking Tanya for your memberships. That's so nice. Uh, so that's right. You're the boob squadron, Ariana. Ariana square pants. That's great. So the way this, so uh, the, the Black Panther, uh, um, I'm not going to have time for a crown spoiler review, Mika. And also the interest isn't that high. The review has not performed to the level that I would want for it to warrant a spoiler review. And I'm like in Black Panther mode this week. Hey, Jay, I got tons of videos that are coming out towards the end of the week. And to make sure that they go up, I have to work on them during the earlier part of the week. Also, it's award season, so I'm going to all these screenings. My time, my time is becoming uh, quite busy. But that's fun. We want to be busy. It is better than the alternative. All right, so thank you very much. Welcome to the show. It's so nice to see everybody. You guys are great. I love all of you. Uh, if you don't have your Black Panther 2 tickets, you might want to get on that. All right. Story number one. Boop. All right, as I said, it is a big day for Netflix. Netflix is making deals left and right. Left and right, baby. And they landed a big one this afternoon, and that is Gears of War. Is it really that big, though? Is it? I was surprised to see the sales numbers for this game. <laughs> The way everybody was making such a big deal about it, I thought it was one of the biggest games ever created. But it actually, it actually is only moderate. Uh, who here plays Gears of War? Ah, Ivan does. You know Borderlands, that crazy Eli Roth movie that's coming out? That has sold more than Gears of War. That's right. This could be another Halo, Kevin. Some of you have played it. Eric said a decade ago. Sweet burn, Eric. Ha <laughs> Oh, uh, that's funny. 
Uh, you know, Anthony says, I have no idea what that is. You know, that's interesting. I've heard of Gears of War, but I'm also not particularly familiar with it. Although Writer Boy loves Gears. I love that kind of enthusiasm. That's what Netflix wants to see. And that's what I want to see if I'm going to cover this, you know, if I'm going to actually cover these properties. Would I cover the movie? Hey, Audrix, for sure. Adult animated series? Not quite sure. You know, that's a little bit more of a commitment. Uh, so let's, uh, yes, we'll talk about Dave Bautista. I don't know about that, Josh. I don't know about that, but he is trending. I'm sure Dave Bautista appreciates that. I think you mean Assassin's Creed, Steven Turner. All right, so, uh, Platinum Diva, I always love seeing you. Your positivity is glowing. All right, so Gears of War, the coalition will help Netflix create uh, a movie and an adult animated series. And as the world of streaming uh, proliferates and creates more and more competition, suddenly um, game developers are getting more creative control. Uh, you know, like uh, Coalition is a creative partner here. You know, one of the things that stopped a lot of video games being turned into Hollywood uh, collaborations in the heyday, in their heydays, is that Hollywood didn't want to collaborate. Hollywood wanted to be, yoink, thank you, we'll take it from here. And of course, video game uh, creators were like, uh, we're doing a moving story as well. We really know what we're doing. We don't want to do that. That's the reason that Halo took so long, because Microsoft wasn't willing to just hand it over. That's right, Mika. But because of uh, streamers being so prolific, even the old school companies like HBO are willing to work with the game developers, which is why Naughty Dog is working in tangent with HBO on The Last of Us. Uh, which, by the way, The Last of Us, even The Last of Us, just barely makes the 50 top-selling video games of all time, the top 50. And The Last of Us, and it was the reworking of, you know, it was like the, the re remastered version of the first game that just barely made it. And I gotta tell you, Gears of War ain't on that list. So that's interesting to me. So they're gonna do a movie. They're definitely doing a, what was number one? Oh, I, let me look it up. That's funny. I didn't even think to write it down because it's a list of 50 things. Hold on. Top selling games of all time, Minecraft. <laughs> Hollywood's like, what the heck are we gonna do with that? It's like, okay, the top 10 are Minecraft, Grand Theft Auto, five specifically, Tetris, Wii Sports, PB, PUBG Battlegrounds, Super Mario Brothers, so they're looking forward to that movie, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Overwatch, what number is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pokemon, red, blue, green, yellow, whatever. And then Red Dead Redemption 2. What a crazy list. What a crazy list that is, man. All right, so yeah. So, those, so it's, it's not even the top 50 Gears of War. It's not even the top 50. So they're going to do a movie, and today everybody's like, Dave Bautista should totally star in this movie as that dude in that picture right there. But I got to tell you, for Netflix, wouldn't that just be Army of the Dead, you know, Zack Snyder's zombie movie where they also went up against a bunch of mercenaries? I really don't, you know, with all due respect to Dave Bautista, who is in all, you know, he's doing a lot for Netflix. He's also, of course, in uh, Glass Onion. I think they could do a little bit better. I, I would not hire Dave Bautista as, as much as his fans would like to see him. I find that sometimes fan casting will cast actors or, or you know, semi-actors. You go, you guys want stunt people and wrestlers. And a lot of times, I'm sorry, they're just not good enough actors. Although I will say that Dave Bautista would be a pretty good Bane, Mika. I kind of like him as Bane. Uh, especially the way that Gunn had written Bane before that was cut. Uh, I could actually really see it. I think Dave Bautista would be an excellent Bane for James Gunn specifically. I could see it. I could see it, but I don't want him to be in this movie. Uh, that's right. I mean, like when he put glasses on in Blade Runner 24, 29, 2049, I was like, that's kind of interesting. But then when he was in Dune, I was like, this is a waste of everybody's time, including Dave Bautista's. All right, so I would not put Dave Bautista in this movie. Then, also, they want to do an adult animated series. He does look pretty good in Knives Out, too. I have to say, Marco, he looks pretty good in Knives Out, too. But that might just be the trailer doing him some favors. I have to see how he is in the actual movie. And he was good in my spot. You know, Dave Bautista has his moments. I'm not knocking Dave Bautista, but I wouldn't put him as the star of this movie. 
Uh, so anyway, uh, they also want to do an adult animated series, which makes sense because, of course, Arcane has been huge for Netflix. And also Blood of Zeus, an adult animated series, was very good. And Castlevania. So adult animation does quite well on the service. So I think these are good ideas. Now, what's Gears of War about? It's the same old, same old, man. It's the apocalyptic future. Humanity has to take on a mysterious threat from below, and it's the military. Delta Squad! You know, that kind of a thing. You know, it seems to me a lot like, I don't know, Borderlands, or Last of Us, or any, any movie. But, you know, apparently Gears of War has some brand recognition. It's been around for 16 years, 16 years. Guns, uh, Gears of War 5 came out in 2019, and I checked the list of sales, and for both 2019 and 2020, it could not make the top, uh, the top 20 list of sales for games for the year that it came out. So it seems like the quality of this game is diminishing. Hey, Jean Lucas. So I'm a little nervous about that as well. Uh, you might be like, well, then why would Netflix want to buy this thing? Why would Netflix even want to make this deal? Well, Arcane's not a huge sale. Arcane's not one of the top 10 games or 20 games, right? But yet it's very successful and done very well and raised the profile of the game as well as been a successful thing for Netflix. So I guess that's the, that's the trade-off. Also, apparently the trades reported that Scott Stuber has been trying to make a Gears of War movie since Gears of War was popular. <laughs> and is like, I finally did it. He's like, I checked that box, baby. I checked that off my to-do list and then dust it off. So I think that's pretty funny. Also, Gears of War 6 is set for 2024. So maybe they're hoping to use this as a way to promote the new game as well. Hey, Master World uh, 648. I have to tell you that this seems real iffy to me. I think it could either be awesome and reinvigorate the Gears of War brand, or it could be another Halo or Doom where everybody's just like, this is another Halo or Doom. So that, I mean, I think casting will be really important. Uh, glad you made it, Jack. I think direct, the director and writer choice will obviously be important. And I also hope the scope, I think the scope of it, you know, are they really going to try and do something special or are they going to lean really heavily on the IP and be like, IP, do all this work for us. And that never works. So let's see. The arcane game is free. What does it have? Like uh, purchase points in it or something? I'm just nervous. I'm nervous. Sam Hargrave from Extraction. Mika, you got your studio executive on Hardcore. I love it. He'd be a great choice. Uh, but, you know, also, is there really going to be an appetite for soldiers fighting monsters when we've seen it at so many, so many times at this point? How are they going to make it seem fresh? That, to me, is also a very important question. All right, so that's the first story of the day. All right, good job, Gears of War. Good luck, everybody. All right, story number two. Hold on. Boop. Whoa, they, they're renewing everything over there. The headline for this category for me in my notes, notes is Renewal City. Uh, that's right. Boop, boop, baby, boop. Everybody uh, in Netflix, they're just renewing stuff left and right. And I even threw Sandman in here. And first I was like, I'm just going to talk about Ryan Murphy's shows that were renewed today. And I was like, wait a minute. Sandman was renewed. We'll just make this a whole renewed category. All right, so late, the middle of last week, the Sandman finally got renewed. And I think it was partially because it was popular, partially because it so strongly represents the LGBT community, and it would have been a real bad look for Netflix to cancel it. I think those headlines would have hurt. Sean says, uh, while sales have diminished a lot, it's due to Gears of War being an Xbox Game Pass game. Been a Gears of War fan for so long. So excited. Thank you for explaining that, Sean. So they put up a paywall. Uncool. Mika says, did James Gunn have a say in Sandman's renewal? Uh, I doubt it because, I mean, it was the day after he got, he got into office. Uh, like it was like a political thing. You don't get to vote for who is it. Uh, Ar Arcanus, uh, Econa Stone says League of Legends uh, that Arcane is based on is one of the biggest games in the world. That's awesome. That's great. I had never heard of it before Arcane came out. Ah, Cruno, you're very sweet. So anyway, uh, so, so I think that this, the headlines of canceling the Sandman would have been really bad for uh, Netflix. Uh, but the show is incredibly expensive, which is why it took so long, I think, for it to get renewed. Also, I think it was being bullied online. I think a lot of people, you know, there were people putting up fake headlines that had been canceled, and then some toxic people were kind of capitalizing on that and harassing the, Neil Gaiman and the cast and saying, you know, you deserve to be canceled and stuff like that. Neil Gaiman was fighting back and calling attention to that. It was pretty bad. 
So I think that it was really important to fire back and be like, it has not been canceled. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying it's going to last longer than two seasons, to be honest with you, but I think it was important that it made two. Uh, so it was renewed. Uh, I think that you should be you should be expecting it to be downgraded in terms of the budget because it was an incredibly expensive show. It was like $15 million an episode or something, as I recall. That's too much, I think, for what it ended up bringing in. So if they can even just bring it down to, I don't know, $10 million an episode, I think they'll be in a good place. Uh, it was a very good season, though. I thought it was incredible. Although I never watched the a surprise episode that dropped. I thought they did that very poorly. Who here watched the 11th episode where they were like, surprise, there's a cat running around? I was just like, not into it. Raphael says, Game Pass is not a paywall. It's a way to rent monthly a bunch of games. But it is a paywall if it's the only way to get it. The Delicate Genius says it was, that's a great name. It was better than The Rings of Power. Uh, some of you did watch it. Some of you watched it and said it was not great. Oh, that makes sense. That's maybe that's why people didn't talk about it too much. But I really loved what they did air. I thought it was quite strong. And so I'm so glad that it's coming back. And, you know, I think that uh, Desire was only teased. I would really love to see more of them. Uh, and I think that there's a lot to go on for the second season. So I'm excited. I hope, it, I hope it does well. But at least it got renewed. And I think a lot of that is just to beat back the haters and to you know, protect the legacy of the show and the brand and the fandom so they don't have to be so bullied. You know, I think it's, you know, it's embarrassing not even to get one renewal. They might even say it's not ever going to go longer. They might be like, it's only meant to be a two-season story. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, just to protect themselves. I could see that happening too. All right, so that was the first show that Netflix renewed last week. And then today, Ryan Murphy got a double renewal. Hey, Steam, uh, Steam, Steam, Blust. So Ryan Murphy got a double renewal, and it was he himself who was briefly trending. The Watcher has been renewed for a season two, which I'm very excited about. I really liked The Watcher. It kind of had a bit of an open ending, uh, so I think that works to go into a second season. I really thought it was well done. It was just scary enough for me, and I just thought it was great content. So I'm thrilled that it has been renewed. Uh, so that's the one. That's one of the things that was renewed. Uh, although Barbie said that she hated the ending of The Watcher. Who don't ruin the ending of The Watcher? But who liked the end of it? I thought the ending was great. I thought they kind of told you who did it. Hey, Caleb. Oh, Kagreel also hated the ending. Interesting. I think the story would just follow who was in the house next. I don't know if they didn't just knock that house down and build it up from scratch, pave over that whole land, and so that's what they should have done. Uh, but nobody would do it. I guess they don't want to pay for that. It was funny. Uh, the stuff with Jennifer Coolidge was really great. Throughout the season, but particularly in the end episode, I thought it was so good. Uh, all right, so that was renewed. And then also, Dahmer was renewed. How on earth could they renew Dahmer? Which, of course, as you know, was a absolutely hugely successful show. Well, they've renewed it as an anthology series called Monster, where it will focus on uh, monstrous figures throughout history who have impacted society. And I think that there's an open call as to who, how they've depicted it. It could go from anywhere from murderers to people who've had a very negative effect on society in terms of, you know, maybe an Alex Jones. I think that could be quite interesting. So I think that there are different ways that they could go with that. It would be very interesting. Now, the only thing that tempers my excitement about this uh, is that he's supposed to have done a bunch of American crime stories, which I think that really fell off in terms of quality after the O.J. Simpson trial. Uh, Steven says Ratchet did really well and was uh, greenlit. I wonder why R Ryan Murphy never did that season two. I think because Ratchet wasn't good, and I think it was really kind of an insult to the original character, quite frankly. I think I'm glad that he didn't continue with that. And then also, what the heck about Feud? He's finally doing another Feud, uh, which seems like not totally to fit the mold about um, Truman Capote. So let's see. But I'm a little nervous about it. I'm a little nervous. You know, it's interesting, Alberta, that you bring up Harvey Weinstein because I saw She Said 
uh, over the weekend at an award screening as a Critics' Choice member, and that's the movie about Harvey Weinstein. And I have to tell you, it was absolutely brilliant. You'd think that would be a very difficult subject matter to handle, and how they, you know, you would wonder how they would approach it. It was phenomenal. Not just talking about Harvey Weinstein. I'll, you know, Kate and I might review it. I might do a catch-all, you know, and put all these tra reviews together like I did last year. But it was just really brilliant. It was like, it was a little bit similar to Spotlight. Remember how that was the Catholic Church scandal? Um, and I think they did a really, really great job about it. I loved it. Uh, Mikas is better than Bombshell? I would say so. I'd say so, because, you know, I think the Bombshell was really affected by the toxicity of Fox News overall. And so I think it was hard to have sympathy for some of those, the people that were uh, spotlighted. Uh, I would very much compare it to Spotlight. So if you enjoyed Spotlight, which was, uh, I believe, the Best Picture winner, uh, you would, should watch She Said. I thought it was phenomenal. Uh, all right, so anyway, uh, so feud. So I'm just nervous. I feel like these other entities won't live up to Dahmer. I feel like Ryan Murphy has a hard time repeating his successes. I think the next big hurdle for Dahmer will be whether or not it gets a lot of award nominations, you know, uh, if it's recognized in that capacity. It has a bit of a scandal in terms of the way it treated the victims and the victims' families, so that, I think, could really hurt it in that capacity. Writer Boy says, what sort of crime drama would you want to see on Netflix? Something similar to Dahmer? Dahmer was too much for me, to be honest with you. I love Mindhunter, but, you know, I'm a, I, have, I have a line. It, you know, I can take a lot. But I, Dahmer was too much for me, just as it was a little bit too much for me with um, Cabinet of Curiosities. There's just some stuff that's just too much. Uh, I would love for Mindhunter to come back. I heard it was too expensive. I heard that's why Mindhunter didn't come back. Uh, it's just a costly show. So, but let's see who they, I think Dahmer was extremely inexpensive, uh, which is one of the reasons I think Netflix loves it. So we'll see what happens. We'll see. I do plan to review Netflix's Pinocchio. Yes, I do. So we'll see what happens. I would love to see Evan Peters nominated. He already won an Emmy, actually, for um, Mayor of Easttown, but I think that it would be really great for him to get uh, nominated. So we'll see what happens, but what a coup for Ryan Murphy. You know, good for him. He doesn't give up, and he's, you know, he's had a little bit of a rough patch where people were like, maybe he's lost his magic touch, maybe he's lost his Midas touch, and that is very clearly not the case. So Netflix. You know, that's another thing. The, the streaming wars are pretty intense, so Netflix got to gotta have ammunition. All right, so the third story of the day, and then we can get to that. You can ask me anything you'd like. Boom, baby. Jimmy Kimmel. I can't believe it. Jimmy Kimmel got invited back to host the Oscars for 2023, the 95th Oscars, his third time hosting the Oscars. I'm not a fan of this choice. Hey, Marco. I have to tell you, it's nothing personal against uh, Jimmy Kimmel, although I do feel that Jimmy Kimmel is not a great choice for other reasons, which we'll talk about in a moment. But I just overall really dislike networks hiring their late show hosts to host awards shows on the same network. It feels cheap to me, very inexpensive, uh, because of course, you know, the, the host wants to be a, a network company guy. And then also it feels very promotional to me. Um, Juan says the only murderous trio have to host. That would be very funny. Although I didn't like that some of their jokes at the Emmys this year. Uh, oh, thank you, Andrew. Ah, oh, that's very sweet. That's such a cute little sticker. That's so cute. I love it. Um, so I feel like, you know, I actually got to tell you, I think that, uh, the Emmys were, were extremely well ho uh, hosted by Kenan Thompson. I thought he actually did a really good job. Uh, and I, I thought he was excellent. So I, you know, I would love people to have, you know, I would like to get new blood in here. Having the same hosts again and again and again, I think is just boring. So I'm not a fan of that. Uh, and I thought that, uh, I forget uh, their name, but the person who was like the DJ announcer uh, also did a phenomenal job. That was a great package. The Emmys I thought were extremely well produced. One of the best, best awards shows I've seen in a long time. I love the stage. The Emmys were incredible. Uh, I've, I've high hope, you know, they, that set a high bar in my opinion for the Oscars. Also, I just think the Oscars, they come too late. Uh, it's, it's really difficult. But anyway, the worst, by the, the worst, by the way, is CBS, who for the Grammys <laughs> have like talent from their shows come up and present, even though they have nothing to do with music. And I also find that really uh, insulting. And you know, Kimmel has nothing to do with the movie business. Sure, he has a lot of that talent on his show, but you know, he's not an actor in those movies. I still think the best Oscar host to date uh, was Billy Crystal. 
just incredible. I wish Billy Crystal would come back, quite frankly. I mean, I don't know how much it would take. I'm sure it would be very expensive, but I would love for him to come back. Bob Hope, of course, the big famous host before that. Uh, and there have been some other fine members. I thought when it was hostless, that was fine. I thought that was good. I thought um, Seth MacFarlane actually had some pretty funny jokes. Uh, his, uh, his socks in the dryer, I thought was like brilliant. Uh, Philip says, I know she's getting too political, but I th- would love for Whoopi to come back. You know, Whoopi, yeah. I, think, I thought Ellen DeGeneres actually also did a good job. You guys are right. Ellen DeGeneres did a nice job. So I'm, I'm, I think Kimmel, you know, the two times that he hosted, the ratings were quite low, although they've been even lower since. So I guess, you know, he can point to that. Uh, but he's also, has, you know, he was just in the news recently, which I find very interesting, for saying that he, admitting that he lost like half of his audience when his jokes became more political. It's interesting to me because Stephen Colbert didn't really carve out a niche for himself outside of the Colbert Report until he became very political. Um, I think he's too political. Trevor Noah, to me, is just the right amount of political. I would love Trevor Noah, by the way. He would be an incredible Oscars host. He, uh, I think he hosted, actually, uh, was it the Grammys? I think he did some of the recent Grammy hosting because it's all the same uh, company. And he actually was a, a moment where I didn't, adm- I didn't mind a host for the company doing the awards show. Cause, oh, the Grammy. Yeah, the Grammys, because he did such a great job. I think, and he's very funny. I think Trevor Noah is quite funny. I, I feel bad that he's leaving The Daily Show. I think because Trevor Noah, in my opinion, calls everybody on their stuff. I don't like it when anybody is too one-sided in one direction. That's a little bit, I think that's a little bit off-putting. And I think it's going to keep people from tuning in. I think that Jimmy Kimmel hosting the Oscars is going to right then and there keep a lot of people from tuning in. And, you know, that, what's the point of that? I think that's a little bit uh, tough. I think it's going to be a rough year overall. I don't think they have any crowd favorites. The only thing that's going to save this year's Oscars is if Top Gun Maverick is like a real nominee not just for best picture i think it's a slam dunk for a best picture nomination but if it can get nominated in a couple of other categories and it genuinely that's a great idea jimmy fletcher ryan reynolds and hugh jackman would be the team up we would all love to see and it would promote their upcoming adventure maybe for the year after when it's closer to their movie actually coming out they can do song and dance it would just be incredible that would be just such a wonderful duo i would love to see that but it would be so expensive it would be very, very expensive to get to co-host. But it would be worth it. Didn't Hugh Jackman host the Oscars? Uh, he hosted the Tonys. He did a nice job. Neil Patrick Harris is also a good host. Uh, so, yeah, they have, they have some excellent choices there. All right, so anyway, and Jimmy Kimmel is not one of them. <laughs> but we'll see. I don't think Tom Cruise will get nominated. I'd be surprised about that, but maybe a director nomination for Top Gun Maverick, maybe in some of the technical categories. You know, if Top Gun Maverick can be a Dune or a Black Panther or a Mad Max Fury Road, I think that would help considerably. So we'll see. And also, you have to wonder what kind of shadow the slap is going to put over this year's Oscars. Will it keep them from being really funny? Will it keep them, uh, will they focus on it too much? Will it, will it make a difference as to who's willing to present? Uh, will they put up some kind of barrier? I mean, I think that'll just settle it right there if they put up a little barrier. Maybe a water feature. So you're going to have to, you're going to have to uh, go through, through, you don't have to get all wet if you, if you want to get up there. Uh, so we'll see. But, you know, if they build that into the stage, that will be a lot everybody talks about. So they'll have to address it. But it'll be interesting. I think the other thing is, of course, whether or not the Oscars, uh, you know, if it'll be Black Panther or Avatar 2. They're very similar movies. I don't think they can both be nominated. So the question is, which one of them will go up there? Uh, I think that what happened to Will Smith's career will be enough of a deterrent to anybody who's attending the Oscars for such a repeat thing. But unfortunately, as people predicted, it has gotten a number of people to attack people in real life on stages of all different sizes. Even what happened to Chris Redd outside the Comedy Cellar was terrifying, and I'm just glad he's okay. But he did have to go to the hospital, and he did have to cancel some shows, and that's horrible. I love Chris Redd. I don't think Chris Redd got enough of a fair shot on SNL. I think he's very talented. All right, so those are the three stories of the day. Hold on. Uh, Let me change that. So let me get. So it's uh, four o'clock. You can ask me anything that you would like until 4.10. And then I will do some shout outs. Key says, what do you personally feel James Gunn's tweet yesterday means for uh, projects fans are requesting? Uh, I was a little disappointed, Keith, because, you know, James Gunn, I think, has a reputation for being a straight shooter. 
Uh, and I thought it was surprising that he would kick off his tenure at uh, Warner Brothers DC as doing the same thing that all the other executives have done. I mean, at least he did it right to the fans' faces, but, you know, he just doublespeak. You know, he, you know, he, as, the, as you can see from the poll that I put out, which I put out to prove a point, he had a very carefully worded statement which allowed people to hear what they wanted to hear. And so, uh, I mean, if you could just politely say you weren't going to do something, I think that Warner Brothers would have done that a long time ago. <laughs> they would have been like, we're glad you love Zack Snyder's work so much, but we just aren't going to continue with it. But we do appreciate your, your enthusiasm. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's crazy to think that that, that would work. Uh, but, you know, you never know. You never know. I do think James Gunn has a, a similar temperament to the people who are fans of the Snyder Cut to a degree. So maybe it will work for him. But it was just surprising to see that be his first move. And he still hasn't talked about Black Adam. He's an executive now. He has to rise above social media beefs or whatever. He might feel competition. I mean, he might be, who knows? He might be like, well, Dwayne Johnson didn't uh, congratulate me, so I'm not going to help his movie. But when you're the executive and you're in charge and you're responsible to the shareholders in the company, you have to, you, you just got to be, you know, you could at least say like, oh, I'm so happy to see everyone's enthusiasm about, you know, why doesn't he say he's happy to see everyone's enthusiasm about Henry Cavill? It's just very interesting to me. Uh, Christopher Ear Earl says, thoughts on Disney Plus's Star Wars Acolyte casting additions. We talked about that a little bit at the beginning of the stream. I'm very happy for Carrie Ann Moss. I'm very happy for Daphne Keen. Uh, isn't that also the guy, isn't that Tommen from Game of Thrones? Uh, I believe as well. I, I feel okay about it. I feel okay. Um, you know, I'd have to hear more about the show, but I think, you know, let's see. I think we're all getting a little Star Wars doubt. Although Andor is getting mighty good. Uh, let's see here. Ivan says, thoughts on the White Lotus season two. They won me back last night. It's getting intriguing. There's a lot of mystery going on. I really want to see what happens. Uh, Steven Turner says, and also I love that opening theme song. It's so great. I got it. I got it yesterday. I added it to my Apple Music library. Steven says, can you give us your thoughts on, oh, I just talked about White Lotus. Okay. Uh, Aubrey Plaza is the standout for me so far. She is doing an excellent job. It's definitely the year of Aubrey Plaza. Barbie Minaj says, Lynn Manuel Miranda joined Percy Jackson cast today. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I got to tell you, I, I respect Lynn Manuel Miranda's success, but at the same time, uh, I feel like, whoa, look at all these uh, things. Hold on. Um, I feel like uh, it's just turning it into, you know, that HBO Max show that he had that nobody watched. I feel, I don't know, I don't have a strong feeling about Percy Jackson. I got to tell you, I don't think Percy Jackson's going to materialize. Let's see. But it seems a little bit too much like, you know, that Tony Hale show that's on there right now about a mysterious turn of events or whatever. Feels like the same thing to me. Cam Creative says, hey, Grace, watched Enola Holmes 2 and absolutely loved it. Where would you like to see the franchise go from here? I want that Henry Cavill spinoff that is teased so strongly. But now I'm ner nervous that's not going to happen after he dropped out of The Witcher. Uh, I would love an Enola Holmes 3. I think it's very strongly produced. It was a fantastic movie. Uh, Manpreet says, hey, Grace, did you see the Zootopia Plus trailer? I did. I was a little disappointed that it seemed so small in scale, and I think that they're going to be very short shorts. But So I don't think they look like something that you need to watch right away, but they look like something, you know, like, you know, just to keep, I guess, keep you, I guess, from churning. I feel like some of the Disney shorts are too short, to be honest with you. Uh, Jose, welcome back. Your little brother Gabriel says, hi, Grace, do you think Lindsay Lohan can make a comeback with her new movie, and will you? St I'm not going to review Enola Holmes too. Once a movie comes out, uh, I don't, I'm not going to cover it. But I did, you know, tweet about it, uh, and I don't think Lindsay Lohan can make a comeback. But she's in the upcoming Christmas movie for Netflix, so she does have a revenue stream. So good for her. Haunted Autumn says five months. Five months on the Boop Squad. That's right. You got your your badge. These streams are always such a joy. I love this community. Oh, that's such a nice thing to say, Haunted Autumn. What a nice use of your uh, super comment. Uh, Justin says, Why, what do you think could be done co to improve the Batman 2's box office? More action, shorter runtime, better villain. Uh, Riddler is a cool villain that I think the fans certainly respect and they did the most that they could with him, but he's not a villain that's going to get a lot of the, your main people in the door. You know, uh, I think Mr. Freeze is a great idea. I think obviously Joker, but when you make him hard to look at, it's a little bit tough. You know, Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn, uh, just some bigger names. So I think that the villain was the, the issue there. Um, they, I loved the Batman. I thought it was a great movie, but that, you know, from a business perspective, I think that could help it. Uh, maybe a little bit more action. 
Uh, I just love that movie, though. Generation Marvel says, any news on the Wonder Man and filming in Atlanta in April or an update on Blade? Uh, I haven't heard anything about either of those uh, besides, you know, the Bob Odenkirk we stuff, stuff we talked about on Friday. Uh, I haven't heard any specifics uh, beyond what I've recently told you. Writer Boy says, have you ever thought about doing Cameo, making personalized messages for your fans' followers because you have that, you know, uh, Cameo, I don't know, I'm already asking you guys to pay to be members, then I'm working on super followers over on Twitter. I hope Twitter doesn't implode because Twitter is a wonderful place that has really, you know, changed my life in so many ways. Um, uh, and so, you know, and then I have merch. So I just feel that to put Cameo on top of all that, I'm just, I'm, I'm very sensitive to what I'm asking you to spend. So it's difficult for me to, to do that. Uh, Whelm says, Black Panther 2 is releasing this week. What do you think of Black Adam's chances at the box office? I think it's, it's done. I think it made the money it's going to make. Uh, let's see. That's why everyone's saying it'll be lucky to get to 400 million. Uh, Devin Henderson said, with James Gunn only contract, contracted for four years and the amount of projects already in the can, how can Gunn feasibly complete? Well, they don't have to come out during his contract. Uh, you know, they could always come out, you know, presumably his contract will get renewed. I, I think obviously is his, what his working assumption is or working hope is. So I think it'll be, you know, I, I think there is a little bit of a delay and let's see how fast he can move. He tweeted that he has a big story planned. I told you I heard that that is focused around Amanda Waller and we'll see how fast he can get it up on, his, on its feet. Uh, Keltrick, is that the next one? Let me just see here. I got to get to all the super chats and hey Juan, first, and then I can get to some of the other ones. Uh, Voice Inject says, do you think Iron Lad will show up sooner or later? Later, much later, I think. Uh, let's see here. Hi Nigel says, do you think a writer's strike is on the horizon because streaming services don't intend to share ad tier royalties? I think they'll probably advert, advert it avert the strike because it would just be so uh, damaging uh, at this point. I think there's just so much content and they already have problems from the pandemic and they're still not totally up and running. I think the industry just can't take a hit. Uh, Snevy Link says, I recently got into foundation on Apple TV. When I was done, I couldn't wait to see your coverage, but you didn't do any, any plans to cover season two. I'm afraid not. I just don't think enough people are talking about that show for it to warrant my coverage. I'm sorry, but I'm glad you're enjoying it. Uh, Jiko, my thoughts on the uh, Disenchanted official trailer? I thought it looked pretty good. Although they're releasing the screener very close to release, so that makes me a little nervous. But it looked better than the first trailer, I felt. Keltrick says, after the Alex Jones trial and people being held accountable for things said on their platform, how does that affect or not affect what you do? Well, you know, Alex Jones made comments that endangered people's life and negated actual real events that happened, uh, you know, murder. Uh, so that's obviously an extremely different space than I'm in. You know, I'm doing entertainment reporting. Uh, let's see here. The Platinum Diva says, it's my birthday. Yay, on 11-13, I will be enjoying Black Panther. Uh, that's a Sunday, right? I enjoy these streams. You're great. And BTT Squad. Uh, happy birthday in advance, Platinum Diva. I meant what I said. You're just a ray of sunshine. I hope you have a great birthday. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Michael says, any news on Eternals 2? I haven't heard anything, I'm afraid. Uh, Grazer says, as much as you can say about premium theater experience, uh, 4DX is the best, then Dolby, then IMAX, and ScreenX. Treat yourself. That's great. My favorite is IMAX followed by Dolby. I really love the, well, you have to have a proper IMAX, but if you can't get a proper IMAX, like the one at 68th and Broadway, then I'm all for Dolby. I've never done ScreenX or four, I've never done 4DX. Let's see here. Anthony says, hey, what are your ide what's your ideal for mutant intro? Individual mutants first, then team up in Secret Wars? Uh, I think having one mutant show up like as an end credit scene or briefly or just like a little tease just for you to know that they're there would be like really cool in my opinion. Mika says, Shazam 2 poster released today, trailer soon. I heard there were no big trailers this week, but maybe for Avatar? I'm really nervous about Shazam 2. Let's see if that connects. Uh, then I think I'm almost all caught up. Writer Boy says, will you in re review Interview with the Vampire? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I will not. 
Juan Perez says, Grace, did you ever finish Stargirl? Your review is what got me into it. And it's been my favorite show since, but I want to know your opinion on it. I'm sorry, Juan, I did not continue with the show, but I'm so glad that I turned you on to it and it went so well. I did enjoy it at first, but you know, I only have so much bandwidth. And like, for instance, I got to watch like all 10 episodes of Wednesday this week. And I have tons, I have three I have two screenings during the week, and then I'm going to see Black Panther again this weekend. So it's just, you know, I really kind of have to, you know, schedule my time. And I'm, unfortunately, not everything can be covered, I'm sorry to say. All right, let's see here. What else we got here? Lewis says, Steven Spielberg, Superman. Thoughts? Uh, I don't really think that Steven Spielberg is a good choice for that, to be honest with you. Uh, I just, and also I don't think Steven Spielberg get, I mean, I don't know. I, I just, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't want him for that. I don't think he's a good choice. Uh, Caden, I will review Glass Onion. I'm trying to get a screener or a screening. I haven't heard back yet. I wonder how they're going to handle reviews. Cause you know, it's going to open for just a week in theaters before it goes on, um, streaming. I mean, I guess I'll go buy a ticket if I have to, but like not the day before Thanksgiving. I like to go watch the balloons get blown up for the Macy's parade. Dane says, where's Gavin O'Connor? The accountant was so good. Well, he was supposed to do Suicide Squad, as you know, but then that fell apart. And sometimes it's hard for careers to recover after that. Let's see here. Britt says, thoughts on the John Wick spinoff ballerina with Ana de Armas. I don't know. They might be expanding the John Wick franchise too much. I'm a little nervous about that. Uh, Misbehave says, Grace, will you review the Last of Us game movie? I don't think so. I'm just probably going to cover the show at this point. Gabe Gonzalez says, I would 100% get my friend a BTT Grace cameo shout out for his birthday. You 100% should consider it. It's just an add-on to your content and not required to enjoy it. That's funny. Happy birthday. Uh, sorry, I'm still having problems with my contacts a little bit with the, I think because it's so unseasonably warm here in New York, it's uh, having a lot of dust and dander. Uh, happy birthday for your friend, Gabe. You didn't say his name, so I can't really give him a shout out. Let's see here. What else we got here? I don't want to miss anybody's there. Welcome, Naughty. Welcome. Uh, JLo says, uh, it's my 50th birthday today. So glad I finally made a live stream. Oh, that's right. 1972. Happy birthday. Oh, I'm so glad you're spending part of it with us. That's wonderful. Please wish JLo 1972 a happy birthday. I hope you're having a very special day. Uh, Real Life Quinn says, Blue Beetle, new, uh, Blue Beetle, first photos were comics accurate and good. Well, David Zaslav mentioned it during the earnings call last week. The Disney earnings call is tomorrow, by the way. Uh, and that's great. Zazzy mentioned it, I think, to kind of give a heads up that he wasn't going to cancel it, that it was, st was still going to come out. He can't cancel it. You can't cancel all the superheroes of color. He would cancel himself. So that's great. I haven't heard anything about it. and There's no news, but uh, it did look good in those first photos. Uh, JJ Studio says, what are your top five favorite directors? Oh, that's a tough one. Alfred Hitchcock is my all-time favorite. I am a fan of Steven Spielberg. Uh, I do like Christopher Nolan, even though I think he sometimes can be a little bit egotistical. Uh, I've become a big Matt Reeves fan. Um, who else? Uh, James Cameron. He does do very good work. Uh, I, there are a lot of directors that I like, but I guess those are the top off my head. I think I'm one short, but I reserve it as a rotational spot. Writer Boy says, last question for me. How do you stay so focused? With your line of work, you have so much to watch and research as well as talking to us. Oh, I'm glad you think I'm very focused. Sometimes I feel unfocused. Uh, I think, you know, it's just, I think the really thing that helps is that I love what I do. I actually love and, and, and genuinely am interested in the things that I'm covering. And I genuinely enjoy talking to you guys. I mean, it's something that gives me, really adds to my quality of life. You guys are a benefit to me. You know, I, I love talking to you. You always lift my spirits. You always, you always help me focus. And I love talking to you, not only here on YouTube, but also on social media. So uh, I love the interactive quality of the internet. It's just wonderful in my opinion. Let's see here. Jennifer Escalona says, any plans for the watch along this month? Yes, Jennifer. Oh, it's nice to see you, Jennifer. Uh, the watch along will be after Thanksgiving. It'll be the weekend after Thanksgiving. Uh, I'll set the date probably tomorrow or ask you to vote on it. And then Mando says, do you think the idol could be as big as Euphoria? It doesn't have the weekend. Uh, it does have the weekend in Blackpink's Jenny. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see what they're doing there. 
I'm not sure. I think Sam Levinson, right? I think that he's uneven. Malcolm and Marie was not great. Real Life Quinn says, have you ever thought that if you review non-talked about shows, it'll give it an audience? I look for your review first on everything from, oh, that's very kind of you to say. I have to balance it, Real Life Quinn. That's kind of what I use Twitter for because it takes so long to make videos that, you know, there needs to be a return on that time spent. So that's kind of like, it's always a struggle for me. And then sometimes you don't know what's going to hit. Sometimes like Arcane I covered because I loved it so much. Arcane, they gave everybody those screeners. They were like, please watch these screeners. And I turned it on and I was like, what a show. So I reviewed it. And if I'd known it was gonna be as big as it was, I would have reviewed the chunks instead of just doing a beginning and end video. Uh, but, but you know, that's why I covered that because I just believed in it so much. Bryce uh, Ratliff says, Grace, did you see the rumors of Lizzie Olsen taking a break from Wanda to do indies? Indie films make me nervous because the character is so popular now. I think she has a little bit of time to take a break. And I think there's nothing wrong with her. You know, I think it's good. You don't want to become oversaturated. I think she does want to maintain her acting cred, street cred. Uh, you know, she is a serious actress. Before she joined Marvel, she was like really working hard to get an Oscar. So that's fine. You know, based on what we know, they're going to expand her world a little bit with other characters. And then she'll return and it'll be great. I'm not worried about it. Generation Marvel says, Grace, what are the expectations for the Disney call tomorrow? I'm not sure. We have to see. Uh, they should at least give a Disney Plus, you know, subscriber update, those things. But we'll see what, if they announce anything big. Disney's pretty good at making investor calls uh, stick. And Juan says, do you think the World Cup will affect the box office Thanksgiving weekend? Uh, maybe. There's not that much coming out for Thanksgiving weekend. So that could be, I think, the real issue. Maybe that's why there isn't a lot coming out for Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, let's see here. Let me get to some other questions. Uh, Gabe Gonzalez says, Grace, what are your thoughts on Dahmer's portrayal of the deaf experience? Birthday shout out for Polly. There we go. Happy birthday, Polly. I didn't watch Dahmer because it was too intense for me, but I have heard very good things. So uh, I, I'm glad to hear that you thought that was the case. Harley Quinn Dove says, simply curious. As a reviewer, do you ever think a movie is good and not personally enjoy it? How do you put that line there? That's a great question. I think that's very true, Harley Quinn Dove. I think there are times when you can respect something for how it's done, um, and then also there can be something about it that just, even though the film is well made, a creative choice can really uh, affect you. I would say that's how I felt about The Suicide Squad. Uh, the Suicide Squad, James Gunn's Suicide Squad, certainly was a well-made professional movie, but I personally had serious problems with the tone. Uh, and then also some of the choices that were made specifically for the female characters. Uh, and, you know, that was quite the discussion for us. But I, you know, I made an effort to give kudos to the quality from a technical standpoint and, a you know, the, the artistry of the show, of the movie. Uh, but a lot of you weren't hearing it because you were just so upset that I didn't absolutely love the entire thing. You know, I tried to be really fair about that. I do try to be really fair. Let's see here. But I understand emotions run high. Emotions run high. Max says, Grace, what should I do to get my husband? What should I get my husband for his birthday? Ah, oh, that's very sweet, Max. I don't know your husband. You know, I find out that getting gifts for people, an experience gift is really wonderful. Tickets to something, uh, something for them to do, like a membership. Uh, I, you know, maybe there's a favorite place your husband likes to go. Uh, I think that that would be something that uh, maybe that would be a good way to go with the gift. Uh, Keith, I'm so glad you're enjoying Titan season four, but as I said, bandwidth, and I just don't have time for that. Uh, let's see here. Graham says, get him a paintball gun. That's funny. Uh, let's see here. Graham really is behind the paintball gun suggestion. Oh. Aaliyah agrees about experience gifts. Uh, let's see here. Marvelous says, do you think that Dottie will reve be revealed to be a witch in Coven of Chaos? You know, I don't know about that. I think she should just be a regular housewife, but maybe she could be recruited. You never know. Uh, I, I, think pro I think not, but let's see. Anthony, that's true. You know, I'm not, I think the you know, DC fandom accuses me of being all over the place, but nobody's all over the place like DC fandom. Although, to be fair, nobody's all over the place like DC. It's just a real mess over there. Caden says, what did you think of See How They Run? Well, I talked about it a little bit on Movie Math, 
And I said that I thought that uh, it was uh, really clever. I thought the writing was very strong at points and I was really impressed with some of the callbacks. You really have to pay attention. But I thought in other points it really dragged. So I thought it ended up just being an okay movie. Barbie Minaj says, do you think Gunn will greenlight a Gotham City Sirens movie? I suspect that he will. Josh, I'm trying to work on that Harrison Ford video. Uh, I, it's hard for me. I've lost some enthusiasm for it because it's been so long since the announcement was made. But your enthusiasm makes me feel a little bit better. Um, I think for a Gotham City Sirens, I think what James Gunn, based on his tweet over the, over the weekend, I suspect that he's maybe going to announce a whole bunch of stuff at once. I think he's going to maybe put, like, you know, like Kevin Feige does, like put together a phase. I think he's going to blatantly copy Kevin Feige. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. For those of you who didn't see James Gunn's tweet, he was addressing the campaigns on social media for uh, like Legends of Tomorrow and uh, the Snyder Cut. Uh, and he said that, you know, and there was some, you know, he, he kind of left it vague as to whether or not he was shutting those things down or just putting a pin in them. But he said, we're working right now on getting a big plan for DC, which is going to be a big story that's going to be big enough to invite all the fandoms in to enjoy. And we hope you're looking forward to hearing about that. You know, I'm paraphrasing. You can just go to his Twitter account and you can see it. Uh, but so, you know, I think that he's maybe going to introduce a phase. Well, he and Peter Safran. Peter Safran's probably like, I'm running DC too, man. Peter Safran's got to get himself a Twitter account and start, tweet start tweeting. Well, I gotta tell you though, it's hard for any, this is what a time for Twitter to implode because Twitter gets a lot of free advertising for projects out there. And right now nobody's talking about anything but the fact that Twitter is imploding. So I think that's really difficult. Like how is that gonna affect the election? And how is that gonna affect, affect people talking about Black Panther Wakanda forever? When instead everyone's just gonna be talking about Twitter and then also you know, causing havoc with this new verification system, which is now going to launch the day after the election, because people pointed out that it could be somewhat semi-treasonous for him to release it the day before. Uh, Becton Falco says, do you know who specifically Aubrey Plaza is playing? Uh, I don't know. I just told you, as I said, she would be a villain. Hey, King Louie, welcome back. Raphael says, would you rather see Miles Morales as a teen or a college student like Tom Holland's Peter? Um... I, I like, I think he was already a child, Miles Morales, and into the Spider-Verse. I think that, you know, once these characters start being aged up, they should be aged up across the board. You don't want them, like, P Peter Parker was a child for, in high school for way too long. Jack, as I tweeted, I think that all of Taylor Swift's new songs sound the same. I'm sorry. Max says, my husband breaks everything in our apartment without a paint, without a paintball gun. That's funny. Patrick says, do you think Strange New Worlds will go straight to Disney Plus? You mean the new animated movie? No, it's going to be theaters only. I'm seeing it this week, but I can't tweet about it until the week after. So it'll be mums the word until next week. I have not had any shawarma yet, Mish. I'm going to go to Disneyland and go to California Adventure. What was your Snapchat, King Louie? How did I miss this? Where did it go? Let me see. Why do you do this to me, the Twitters? I mean, the YouTube? Let's see. I'm looking, King Louie. I don't see it anywhere. How far back is this thing, man? It's not even here anymore. Could you just write it? Uh, Blick says, lovely to see you at least a bit today, Grace. Wanted to see Woman King, but my Cinemark theater never screened it in my city. City. They did on the rest of the country, though, but not here. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but I hope that you will um, seek it out when it goes on digital, which should be relatively soon because it just dropped out of the top ten. Audric says, will you review The Last of Us and Mando? I think they come out the same month. Sure will. I'm not. Of course I'm reviewing Mando season three, and I'll review The Last of Us. It'll be a Pedro Pascal utopia. Where's your comment, King Louie? Let's see here. Um, Graham Post says, with games being adapted more, do you think it'll affect how they're written and promoted? As they're now, I hope not. That's really ruined comics. But that's an excellent point. 
That's an excellent point. Uh, Marco says, do you prefer Penn Bagley or Adam Driver as Reed? Well, if I had to choose between those people, if they were being uh, considered for Reed Richards, and that's not the whole list, by the way. But between those two, I got to tell you, I think you can't go wrong, quite frankly. I guess, I guess whoever wants it more. And also, it would depend who the Sue Storm was. You know, you'd have to do chemistry reads. I'd also have uh, Tina Cuerta come over and read with them and be like, how's this coming across? Oh, King Louis says, my super chat was, do you think she said it's just the industry patting itself on the back? No, it is not. It is not because it's not the industry. It's actually very, very uh, bad about the entertainment industry. It's, if, it's, if it's saying anything good about anybody, it's about New York Times and journalism. Uh, what's that actor's name from Brooklyn Nine-Nine? Who's the lieutenant? Andre something? He was fantastic. He had such a small role, but he was great. Lloyd Lester says, any holiday plans, either Thanksgiving or Christmas, that you want to share? Uh, I don't like to share personal plans, I'm sorry to say. But, you know, just, you know, the regular stuff this year. Uh, let's see here. But I appreciate you asking. Writer Boy says, have you ever considered being a producer or sorts or an advisor on screenplays or novels? That is such a nice thing for you to suggest. That means so much to me. Uh, Kayla says, do you think they should change the Rose actress on the Sandman? Oh, that's tough, Kayla. I don't know. I don't think that story connected, but I don't know if it's necessarily that actress's fault. But they do have a bit of a problem there. That was my least favorite storyline. Uh, Kim says, never do this. You never know, Daniel Kaluuya got cast into the Spider-Verse as Punk Spider. That's great. I did see that. And I know people were excited about it, but Punk Spider's not a particularly big character, and I don't even know how big that part's going to be. But I'm always happy for Daniel Kaluuya to get more work. Uh, Marvelous says, do you think that Denise Richards should come back to Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? She sure should. She shouldn't let herself get pushed out of there. I hope Lisa Rinna get, is, is out of there. Ah, uh, thanks, Gabe. Uh, Blick says, opinions on Richard Madden joining DC. Did he? I mean, he's, he's a pretty good um, eternal. Rahul Coley for Reed, Dane O'Leary? Uh, I did not hear his name, unfortunately. He's not being considered, last I heard. Uh, thanks, Ale Alexis. That's very sweet of you. And then uh, Anna will be the last question, and then I'll do some shout-outs. Watched all MCU movies for the first time this year and watched all your previous coverage, too. Oh, did you really? That means so much to me. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so glad I was part of that experience for you. And now you're looking forward to my Black Panther 2 coverage. Oh, it's going to be good times. It'll be a little slow at the beginning of the week, I'm afraid. But there'll be tons of videos towards the end of the week. Oh, it's going to be great. I got them all planned. I'm writing them out. Matt says, Grace, have you seen the animated prequel short for the Midnight Sun, Salem Sisters, and Marvel's YouTube channel? No, I have not. But that sounds pretty good. Makes me want to look at it. All right, let's do some shout outs. All right, so where are you? What are you doing? What are you up to? Give me a way to interact with you. What's going on? What's going on with you? Oh, Andrew, that makes me feel so nice. Thanks for sticking with me. Brian says, Sending, spending my lunch hour on my first live stream. It's an experience. That's great, Brian. I'm glad part of the experience was you getting a shout out. Cosmic just finished eating some tacos. Patrick Derlings is finishing out my boring work in Toronto. Uh, I hope we made it a little bit more fun. Platinum Diva says, I am excited. My birthday weekend should be fun. I bet it is. I'm glad you're doing a whole weekend. I always do birthday weekends too. My family does. Jack says, sat cuddling with my cat in the UK. Aw, it's adorable. Uh, I agree, Marco. Another alien with Sigourney Weaver would be fantastic. Guido says, just chilling with some tea during my break. Oh, I like tea. I'm a tea person, too. I like iced tea, though. Uh, Max says, my husband is ordering a paintball gun to redecorate. Is he really? Oh, no. What have you done? It was Graham, right? Graham was the one who recommended that. Uh, Adam's Fear says, about to go to the gym in Hawaii. Wow, what a great place to live. Danny Dumphy uh, says, thanks for the stream, Grace. If you are in the U.S., remember to vote tomorrow. Oh, thank you, Danny. Everybody, if yes, please vote tomorrow. I actually voted on Saturday because we had early voting here in New York. I got to vote on Saturday. It only took about 15 minutes. It was a really great experience, uh, and I had a great time, uh, and I'm glad that I did it. Lots of people took their dogs to vote. It was very cute. Sean Artis says, getting ready for my trip to Barcelona. Ooh. Uh, Gabe says, pretending to work, but instead watching you from Chicago. Love it. We won't tell on you. Uh, Jico says, about to uh, Elliot Holmes, too. Finally on a snowy, gloomy. Uh, Jico, you're, you're 
thing makes no sense. Chen says, I have an assignment for a new job and it's on movie income. I save the file as movie math. Oh, Chen, that is so fantastic. That makes me so happy. Good luck with your assignment. That was so great. Ellie says, drinking my first coffee of the day in Melbourne. Oh, that's right. It's the morning for you, Ellie. Good morning. I hope you have a great day. Luis says, waiting for Wakanda Forever Thursday IMAX tickets. Uh, bought a month ago. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, if you didn't get IMAX tickets at AMC, remember AMC Movie Pass members, uh, not Movie Pass, uh, AMC Stubbs List members will sometimes drop their tickets right before a showing goes because they, ha they, get, they can only do three at a time. So a lot of times they'll hold on to them, but then not use them. So always keep an eye on them. You know, you got to ride the tickets. Oh, Lewis has a birthday too. Lewis says, it's my birthday on Wednesday, hoping for a stream. I'm planning to do a stream on Wednesday. Yes. Editing Geek says, I turned 18 this year and I'm voting for the first time tomorrow. Oh, that'll be fun, Editing Geek. Congratulations. Hey, Sean Walker. Let's see here. Keith says, drinking tea and eating Canadian chocolate Smarties. Oh, I don't even know what that is, but it sounds fun. David Quevedo says, I, ju that's a, I like that uh, head massage emoji. I just got out of a massage, my last day of my personal four-day weekend. Oh, yes, we caught you at the beginning of that, didn't we, on Friday. I'm glad to send, spend some time with you in this awesome community. Oh, that's so great. I'm really glad that you wanted, you know, you had four days off and you wanted to spend it with us part of it. That's very nice. Brian says, looking after my three-month-old grandson in the UK. Oh, that's so nice. It's my birthday on Saturday. Oh, wow. So you're on Saturday and Platinum Div is on Sunday. That's great. Hello to your grandson. Uh, Jimmy Fletcher is ordering Taco Bell. Reminds, yep, Taco. Oh, you're making me want Taco Bell. Maybe I will have Taco Bell today. Taco Bell today. I got to go over and help my dad fix his t cable TV. The picture is just gone. He wants to watch the election returns tomorrow. Uh, got my Wakanda Forever tickets to go on Wednesday. You have a fan here in Guatemala. Ah, uh, thanks, Jimmy. Hello to you in Guatemala. My spoiler coverage, though, out of respect for the U.S. audience, won't start until Thursday, though. But it'll start early on Thursday, as early as possible. Oh, look, Nathan loves Smarties. Harlequin Dove is now waiting for Tristan to get off the school bus. Oh, that's great. Did you see that video of that brother who always dressed in a costume every day for when his brother got off the school bus? That was a great video. Oh, thank you, Brad. That's amazing of you. That's very kind of you. Thank you, Brad. Danny says, hey, Grace, look, Danny's diamond. Danny, damn it, a diamond Danny. Where'd it go? Oh, I got all excited, and now the thing is, oh, there. I'm late for the stream, but always, uh, but always nice to check your coverage. Love from Costa Rica. Nice to see you, too. Oh, you guys are the best. I really, I mean it. I just love talking to you so much. You know, I'm glad that you like talking to me, but I want you to know the feeling is mutual. All right, I better go work on some of those videos. You know, I'm doing a lot of live streams now, but I want to make sure I keep up with the videos too. I've been having trouble with my sleep schedule. So I got to I gotta really make sure I get everything right. All right, everybody. I had a wonderful time as always, and I will see you tomorrow for yet another live stream. Ah, oh, Matt, you just made it. You just made it. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, bye everybody. And the Black Panther review embargo lifts at noon, tomorrow noon. It'll be ready. Okay, oh, I see, Jiko. Okay, great. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye-bye. Bye-bye.